If you're looking for a trusted source to help you stay on top of the ever-changing financial world of investing, retirement and estate planning, and asset protection, whether it's for you and your family or your small business, you're in the right place. This is the 1715 Treasure Coast Financial Wellness Podcast, where we'll keep you up to speed with the latest market news and conditions every week. Now, here's your host, Thomas Davies. Welcome to our segment in which we speak with two individuals, well advisor Thomas Davies and NHL Hockey Hall of Famer Dennis Pavin. Mr. Davies has helped many people, especially families, secure their financial future. Mr. Pavin spent his 15 NHL years with the New York Islanders, helping them win four Stanley Cups. We will have two great interviews. So enjoy the show. When did you start your career and when did you begin working with athletes? Yeah, so great question. Uh, really kind of started my career back in 1996. Uh, I was working for the PGA Tour prior to that um, and really just uh, started looking around to what I wanted to do when I was 25 years old and then there was an opportunity Uh, in Delray Beach, Florida, to work for Merrill Lynch. And uh, so I went to work not knowing anything about the stock market, being green to everything. And it was a great learning experience. And I was there for quite a few years and kind of worked, worked from the bottom up. I started in cashiering and, and trades and order and compliance and, and all the back office fun things that, you know, nobody ever hears about. And Uh, in 2006, I got my license and started working in the industry as, a, as an advisor in 2007. And, you know, as far as athletes, I've, I've played sports all my life. Uh, you know, mentioned worked for the PGA Tour. So it was just kind of a natural fit uh, to work with athletes, uh, having that camaraderie. And there's something to be said about uh, a locker room camaraderie. And I was always part of that as a, as a kid and it, all through high school and, in, and into college. And, you know, so you, you have a bond with other athletes. Um, just if you played sports, uh, it's just it's kind of hard to explain, but it's a natural bond that you have with athletes and you kind of understand each other. Uh, and so it just seemed like it was a great fit uh, as I, you know, started my career and, and started branching out and it just made sense because I understand what athletes kind of go through the mentality uh, and, and really just kind of look into their financial lives now as an advisor um, and understand what they're going through, what it took to, to get there to that elite level uh, and what it takes to, to stay there. Uh, you know, they're Athletes are, are, are just normal people like you and I, but they have a different job. Um, and, you know, when you get to the top levels, it's, it's such an elite status uh, to get there. Out of all the thousands of, of kids out there that, you know, play sports every day and, and, and look to, you know, Denny Potvins and, and, and these greats and say, I want to be like them. Um, it really takes a lot of work and dedication. And you, I think you have to have a good understanding of that. Uh, to, to sit with an athlete and have a good conversation. What made you focus on working with current and retired athletes? Yeah, so another great question. And, you know, as I mentioned, having the ability to kind of communicate on that level with athletes and understanding their needs, their wants, their goals, um, you know, what they're going through while they're in their playing careers and really understanding how sports evolve and, and, and the things that they have to go through uh, gave me a great understanding. And then retirement, uh, you know, athletes, when they retire, it's, it's really such a different atmosphere. And, and, and I know Dennis is going to talk about this is just, you know, you, you, you've trained, you've played a sport all your life and now you get thrown, you know, it could be when you're 28, 29, you know, Playing careers sometimes aren't that long. You know, Dennis had a great playing career, as you mentioned, for 15 years. Well, some playing careers only last two or three years. Well, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? Because you started playing the sport at three and four years old, and you've played it all your life. And so now you're thrust into society. And so, once again, having the understanding of where they come from 
and how to focus on retirement and say, okay, for the next 40, 50 years, what is it that you're going to do with your life? You've made uh, you know, a, a ton of money in your lifetime, uh, you know, once again, maybe two years, maybe 10 years, and understanding uh, how to make that money last in retirement while you're focusing on new goals. And, and it's, it's difficult, once again, because you've been on the battlefield, you've been out there, and now the mindset is, okay, this is a new battlefield, whether you go into business for yourself, maybe you work for somebody, and it's, it's just a difficult process. So focusing with athletes, have, knowing their mindset, and having that open communication, I think, is really a, a big positive uh, to work, work with athletes. What advice would you give to an athlete just starting out and one who is about to retire? Yeah. So when you're just starting your career, when you're 17, 18 years old, you're still uh, just you really know nothing. Right. You, you think you know everything like most teenagers. Right. But you really know nothing. And so what we do is we sit with the families um, and we we provide a plan for them. Um, and it's a plan that they can stick to. And it's a process. And it really just kind of outlines a, a guideline for them to be successful throughout their playing career to not only uh, try not to be wasteful with their money. I mean, you know, a lot of these, especially in hockey, a lot of these families, you know, generally are blue collar families. So they don't come from a lot of money. Um, you know, so they don't have a great understanding of, of it. And we really just try to put a blueprint down for them to follow and to have them be successful, not just on the field or on the ice, but also financially to kind of, you know, go through their career and be set up for a great retirement. What has been the response? Yeah, so it's, it's great. Uh, you know, Like I said, working with the, the, the families that are just starting out versus retirement, um, you know, they, they love having a plan, being able to follow goals, and really just being able to, you know, navigate what's going on in today's markets and, 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 and going forth. And then, you know, going back to, you know, what would I say to someone in retirement that's just getting ready to retire? Well, it's really working with them, you know, a year or two years prior to them retiring and setting up those goals and making sure that that blueprint had been followed or some kind of plan was followed uh, and setting them up for success in, in retirement. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of athletes, you know, go into opening their own business. There's a lot of entrepreneurs. We hear about it all the time. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, a lot of them want to open restaurants and restaurants seem to be the thing and it's just such a, a hard business to be successful um, so I always advise not a, a restaurant if you, if you just don't have the background in it but uh, it's really setting them up for for a successful retirement making sure that they've saved um, and they have prepared uh, you know their finances for retirement because retirement now is 30 40 years but not only you know, retirement from that first profession, but sometimes they get retirement from their second profession. Uh, and, you know, so you'll have, and, and, and Dennis had a, a great career as, as a, working for the Florida Panthers as a broadcaster. And, you know, that was his second career and, and it lasted him 30 years. So, you know, it's, it's really just working, you know, with the individual and talking about goals and plans And when I talk about retirement, you know, it's generally, it's, it's a moving target. Yeah. You know, we, we, we can set all the plans we want, but life happens. So you have to be able to adjust your plans as life happens. And so that's really where, you know, I think an advisor comes in and can help an individual, you know, navigate as that retirement goal kind of moves around. Dennis, it's a pleasure to meet you. Mm -hmm. Congrats on all the success in your career. Thank you. It's good to be here. Since you have officially retired mm -hmm. from two NHL careers, mm -hmm. one as a Hall of Fame player and one as a broadcaster, where do you find yourself spending your time now? Probably dreaming about being 25 years old again and uh, still playing in the NHL. Um, I, for me, it's very simple. I'll probably never do anything as well as play hockey. But it was a privilege and an honor to have had so many years in the NHL. 
Uh, I must say right now I am totally retired. As I mentioned, I had two careers, playing the game and then broadcasting the game. It was a lot of fun. Both of them were just appropriate, age appropriate. So I just retired a couple of years ago. And now I'm really kind of just laying back. I've got some business interests uh, that are developing all the time. Started a small company, a uh, manufacturing company for pot and socks. Yeah. So I'm staying very busy. Having been in the financial advisory business yeah. after your playing career, how important is it to work with well advisor like Thomas Davies? I did work uh, several years once I got out of the uh, NHL in my playing career. I ended up starting in New York City with Donaldson, Lufkin, and Genret, and I then uh, moved on to First Capital Advisors. In 93, I moved down to Florida to do a little bit of both broadcasting and still work in the services with Raymond James and Associates. So obviously a lot of my clients were people who had been athletes or who were current athletes. It was very interesting how they wanted to gamble. They want to get a stock and make a lot of money on the stock. They weren't thinking about 20 years down the road. So I learned myself as I went along that the thinking was not right, particularly for you know a mid-20s or mid-30s athlete who's got 50, 60 years to live. He's not thinking about the long term as much. So it was a bit of a process doing that. Eventually, the broadcasting took over. I went from doing 38 games on television to 80 games on television. So I had to leave the, uh, the wealth advisory business aside and then entrust other people like I have with Tom Davies. Thomas, being a fiduciary, he puts yeah. his clients' interests first. How important is that now when a lot of athletes today are directed where to go by their agents? You know, the agent business is one that has grown quite a bit. It used to be you would have an agent, you would negotiate a contract, and then afterwards you're on your own basically investing your money or protecting the money. Protecting was never a word that was used by young athletes. They wanted to spend their money. So I think what happens right now is, you know, with, with what Tom Davies and others mm -hmm. do uh, with athletes is they, they package a plan. I think I heard Tom say that many times. That plan has to be packaged so that the player can have an understanding of what maybe your current budget should be, given that you're making a lot of money, and then what it's going to look like 10 years after you retire. Sadly, and Tom, of course, being in that business, can tell you a lot of athletes who have made a lot of money, we're talking millions, within 10 years after their retirement, they've lost it all. Wow. So there's a need for help. NFL Hall of Famer Joe Montana mentioned in an interview that he found investing in the market sometimes gives him that feeling of winning on the field. Can you relate to that? Yes, I can. Not as often as I would like to, but I do have a couple of stocks and I will pass them on as a matter of fact to Tom Davies and we'll, you know, he'll buy them for me and then we start monitoring them. I have other areas where I also invest and there, but I, I really try and keep it to where I'm told you're supposed to be. First, you've got to understand what you're investing in. You've got to know what the company does. It's not just a question of, well, I'm going to invest in Yahoo, the stock. Well, you've got to know everything about what Yahoo does. And I think that's where uh, I have become a lot more involved, and I find that fulfilling. But I don't agree. I don't put it on the same level as winning a Stanley Cup. If you could go back to your last year as a player and give yourself financial advice, what would it be? That's an excellent question because by then it might be a little too late to start thinking about the future. Uh, but I think the, the thing that I noticed so much was even in the 80s, I retired in 1988. Well, we were making much more than $100,000 a year in the 80s. That was a good salary. But within 12 months, trying to find another job outside of hockey or even inside of hockey that would pay me $100,000, 
They're not there. I could have been a coach, assistant coach. It could have been a lot of things. None of it came close to being able to make that kind of money. So if you haven't saved or prepared for the afterlife of professional hockey, you're going to run into some real difficult times. What I had done, which I thought was still today, I think was pretty good, was the fact that I deferred a lot of money from my latest contract, from my last contract. Yeah. So, and I got a nice 9.5% return on it. So for at least from 1988 to about 1995, I had a comfort zone so that I could find where I was going to go later in life. And thank God I did that because I had three children, I had a mortgage. You know, all those payments don't go away. But the income wasn't quite the same. So that cushion was what I thought to be and has proven to be a very smart move. Well, well that was a smart move, right? It was. Yeah, it was. It saved me. You know, it kept my children in private school, yeah. kept my wife with a Mercedes, you know, <laughs> and kept my wife with a fur coat. All of these things, you know, you have to have, correct? So uh, I say it was a huge success. And then by 1995, I was down in Florida working full-time with Raymond James and broadcasting, two of the things I love the most. As we prepare to close, we extend our heartfelt thanks to both men. Their experience and knowledge in the field has been inspirational. From Cold Springs, Florida, this is Claudia Gestro. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the 1715 Treasure Coast Financial Wellness Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend who might like it. And please rate, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to contact us, find more information, or if you'd like to keep up with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn, check out our website at www.tdwealth.net. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you next week.